Assessing Pupils' Progress, APP, helps teachers make assessments about the standard of their pupils' work and use this information to decide what they should do next. At Thomas Keeble Comprehensive School in Gloucestershire, they've been using APP in maths and English at Key Stage 3. Well, the assessing um, pupil progress is all about how I move the child from a level four to a level five, so knowing the key steps to move them. Um, and the assessment for learning is having them have the information to, so they can know. So part of the idea is this assessing their own progress and looking at each other's work. APP helps English and maths because it gives them a grid which gives them very clear indication of how each skill is being developed. So it gives teachers and pupils a much clearer idea of what the next steps will be. What I want you to do is I want you to take your homework task. I gave you P was 36 centimetres. What is the area of that rectangle? And is this the only solution? And I asked you to find a rectangle where the perimeter was larger than the area. What I want you to do is swap books and see if your partner has managed to answer either or both of those questions. For each scheme of work, there are a number of learning objectives that focus on a particular skill. This particular skill, for example, uh, knowing how to use the formula for area and perimeter and distinguishing between area and perimeter, that's a key thing that will tell you that child is working at a level five. So by just finding a resource that enables the pupil to demonstrate their skill to you, enables me to use my spreadsheet and I can then just simply colour them green. OK, so I've picked a few people to come out and demonstrate their answers on the board. We're having a look at the first one. The perimeter is 36. What is the area? Katie, OK, why did you choose 5 and 13? Because um, 5, 13 and 5 and 13 add up to um, 36 centimetres. And then um, the area is 65 centimetres squared because... Um, 5 times 13 is 65. That is brilliant. Well done. We did area back in, I don't know, November. And I just thought it'd be really good. We've had a couple of lessons now just to make sure that when I make the judgment now, have they, made, have they still got it? Do they still understand? And have they really got this idea between area and perimeter? You've already done some work on using the formula, haven't you? Can anybody remember what the formula for the area is? If I write in red on here, area equals jack. Um, it's the width times the length. Good. Width times length. Can anybody remember how we write that in algebra? Jake? Um, w times L or L times W. Good. We've moved away from counting our squares. We don't do that anymore. That's level four. But we've moved on to trying to remember which of the formula to use and to try to remember the difference between area and perimeter. And that's a key skill for level five. All right, so our new task is going to hit both of these assessment focus. And what we're going to try and do is I'm going to give you a little set of cards. This lesson has been planned to check the pupils' understanding of area and perimeter. Then, using a matching task, the teacher can assess the level at which they are working. Our students know the level they're at, because they're so used to hearing about levels in English and levels in maths, and so it's become part of their vocabulary. They have an expectation of progress, of levels, of skills, and so it's the expectation that yeah. consistency across the board that's been really beneficial. Yeah, and also, there's not going to be a shock, is it? It's not going to be a shock <laughs> when they get their reports home when they're a level 4B, because they know they are because they've been told often enough that they need to be moving forward to level five. So if I'm saying, oh, you're nearly... If, I, if they go home with their reports and it says 5C, they know that they've done some work at level five, but they're not secure enough yet for me to give them the 5B status. But if you're trying to find out an area of a square, you, for level five, it wouldn't be just finding out the area of the square, it would be doing lots of methods to help it. And you have to show your workings out as well. Yeah. Like, well, the teacher actually explains what we have to do to get to the next level. So she explains what the levels 
um, what you need to do to get in there? I'm quite good at fractions, and that I know that because we do like leveled assessments, and then you have to put a target of what you're not so good at, and one thing that you are good at, and I put the fractions. We're trying to build like a big triangle, but they're like um, all of these little um, miniature triangles. And they've got like little problem problems on, so like p equals. So you've got to find like perimeter, then like try and find the perimeter. So then you stick onto that one, and then you've got to try and find the other answers. So what way you making like? A In order to help students know what is expected of them, every lesson starts with a walt. We are learning too. In this lesson, students are learning to use and apply their knowledge of area and perimeter. We've always used aims and objectives. So we've always tell them what we're trying to do in the lesson. And we've now changed that to a whole school policy of using we are learning too. And it just gives everybody in the whole school a focus of making sure that pupils know what they're trying to do before when they come into the lesson and so you can evaluate their progress at the end. And by having that and also talking with them about levels all the time and talking to them about what they need to do next, it enables them to know where they're coming from, where they're going to. This lesson's harder than others. If we can complete it, we know that we're like working at a better level than we usually do. One of the most difficult aspects of this task for the students was to decide if they were matching a width and a length to an area or a perimeter. Yeah, so we need to find something. There was one was 20. Yeah, we could use that. Desi? Come to a 20. Oh, right. Is there anything that goes together, isn't it? Area equals 2p, p equals 4 centimetres. Yeah. Although they might be a level 4, to be able to move them to a level 5, they need to some sort of independence with their problem solving. And one or two of the children say, oh, we found it difficult because it didn't tell us which one they wanted. And if they were told, they could have given you the answer, but they didn't have the right concept or haven't yet got the right concept of actually well, work out both then and see which one fits and there's that little bit that's missing so that using and applying part is still not yet a secure level five and this task was an uh, you know enabled me to see that as I was walking around because I wasn't walking around going well put this here and put that there I was asking why have you put that there what what, what reasons have you done to put that answer there and all, and all of those so it's it's not a teaching lesson it's a, an, an information gathering lesson for me so which bit was most challenging for you was it the fact that you're getting confused with area and perimeter, or is it because the task itself was challenging because you weren't quite sure what you were being asked to do, or you didn't know where to get the information from? Charlie? A bit of both. Okay. You get confused sometimes with which one's which, and like, the task was a bit difficult as well. Okay, well, that's very good coming from you because I felt your homework actually was an indication to me that you did know that you could distinguish between area and perimeter. So for you to say it actually might have been the task as well, I can see clearly that that might have caused you a little bit of confusion just because of the way the task was set out. You kind of step, step back... The school have also introduced a new marking system which complements APP by focusing the students on where they are and what they need to do next. We've changed the way we assess so that across the entire school now we have a very positive marking system. Um, we use the three W's, what went well, and we use EBI, even better if. And the idea of these is that they are the next steps in the learning, small steps that are achievable. Think, what do you need to be cautious about with sentence structure or punctuation? Have a think. This is probably your EBIs, isn't it? So have a think. EBI is even better if, and when we're marking, it's a marking policy that we give what went well and even better ifs. And when they're peer assessing or self assessing, they use the same language as we do. The big drive this year has been the development of peer assessment. When they work with a partner and assess each other's work, they use the phrases three W's and EBI's, they understand what the assessment criteria are and they're able to identify where their partner has achieved something or where they haven't and what they need to do in order to be able to achieve that. And I've been most impressed by the way that the pupils have really picked up on the vocabulary and the skills that we've been trying to develop in them. Um, so, the Walt, we are learning to various sentences and punctuation for clarity and effect. 
The first very important thing that we have to do is think, well, why are we doing this lesson? In Year 8 English, the students are self-assessing their homework using the APP grid to determine the level at which they're working. Today we're levelling, uh, self-assessing a homework that we did um, that's a subverted fairy tale. And we're using this sheet to sort of like traffic light our work and so we could identify the bits that we're not so good on and the bits that we are good on. And it, it lets you find out what level you are, because if you read through it, you can look at the things you have done and haven't done. And then to make you even better, if you look at the things in the level above you and you maybe put one or two of the points in there for things you can work towards. OK, to just finish up then, what do you do well and even better if? My what went well was I've used sentence structure quite well and I varied using subclauses and clauses and I've used quite a lot of connectives but my even better riff was to use repetition in sentences to create an effect. My what went well was to recognise my sentence structure and recognise how, how to do it effectively and my EBI was to understand punctuation very well, make it second nature so that I, I just do it without thinking. That's absolutely brilliant, OK? Everyone in this lesson should now think, I know how to do. This is what I'm good at. This is stuff that I need to remember to put in. And here's a couple of things that I need to either learn about or I really need to focus on. And I'm going to do it in this week. I'm going to do it in homework. Fantastic. Right, Having been involved up. in the APP pilot has really um, strengthened our understanding of the levelling of the, the work that we teach. So that when we're trying to say that child is a level six, we can be very confident that we know that because we have um, certain tasks that they, we've seen them do that show their understanding and that they're solid with their understanding. Um, it's much more different from before where we would probably just judge them on perhaps a test. Now we still use tests, but what we do is we do a level test and we pick out the assessment focus from the test and then we're using that as another indicator. I think it's made a huge difference to the standards because it's really helped us, the staff, focus on what we were teaching. We realised we weren't teaching certain areas as thoroughly as others. It allowed us to focus on areas where students were weakest and perhaps we hadn't identified before and that boosts their confidence. Suddenly a student says, oh, I'm rubbish at English. Well, you say, well, you're level six for this bit, you're level five for this bit. OK, this bit's level three, so how do we get better? And suddenly a student who's perhaps held back for spelling and they assume that's English is suddenly given all this confidence to say, well, actually, I'm really good at certain aspects and this is just a little bit that I need to work on. From my point of view, AFL and APP have definitely increased achievement in the school because teachers and pupils and... in many cases parents as well, are much more aware of precisely where each pupil is um, and precisely what each pupil has to do to move on and to improve. And if you give pupils that information, then they want to improve, they want to do better, and they can see precisely how they can do better, and mostly they do.